We have uh, Rick Ivanovic, our partner and speaker at the Everything HR conference. And um, we are honored to have him every time. And today uh, we also have his book, Business as Unusual, and we are talking about this. Hi, Rick. Hi. Welcome again. Thank Always a having, pleasure. <laughs> thank you for having me back. <laughs> yeah. So we have this book, Business as Unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very uh, inspired name for our mm -hmm. world today. Uh, how the idea come and how did you find the, um, the, this topic? How did you reach the, the topic of this book? Well, it all really happened during the pandemic. Yeah. Hey, we're locked down. What else can we do? Might as well write, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't work. Obviously, you can't even go to the office, can't leave the apartment. Um, and and the, so that's when the book got written. And the title really evolved during uh, the pandemic. Um, because as you know, you're locked down, then open, then closed, then open, then closed, and this regulation, that regulate, you know, crazy things are happening. You know, people really didn't know what was going on. People were getting agitated. Everybody wanted it just to be over and get back to business as usual. Except there's nothing usual about what was going on in this pandemic world. Yeah. So that's why I came up with business as unusual, because everything happening was unusual. And it didn't stop, you know, as the pandemic progressed, you know, 2020, 21, 22, it just seemed to get worse and worse. The unusual stuff kept on happening. And even today, what, what 2024, it hasn't stopped. It's unusual as, <laughs> yes, uh, everything is unusual now and uh, it's a new normality. It's like a new normality, but I, I don't like this new normal. I mean, normal, that's a funny word, isn't it? Um, you know, it's all new. That's why it's so unusual. New things keep happening. They just keep happening. We have crazy weather, uh, crazy politics, crazy wars. It's just another and another and another and another. And crazy um, things happen in a lot of companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy things definitely happen in a lot, of, a lot of companies. Hey, work from home. No, don't work from home. Come back to the office, you know, re uh, return. So I don't want this to be a normal. It's just an unusual. So I think it's a state of mind that we need to have is we need to be prepared for the unusual because even though all this weird stuff has already happened, we think it's over, it'll get better, it's going to continue to be unusual. I think that that's what's shaping our world today. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do to be prepared for that? Well, to, to be prepared, we, we have to, number one, we need to be agile. Okay, agile, that's maybe an overused word. We need to be flexible. Yeah. So again, in this, do you work from home? Do you work in the office? Are you hybrid? You know, that, that's a flexibility in the workforce and, and offering people the flexibility on how they work. Is one right and the other wrong? Mm, that's a moot question. Um, at the end of the day, I believe that those people who worked in an office and then during the pandemic, they were forced to work from home. Some of those people may have hated it and can't wait to get back to the office and they work in the office today. Yeah. That's the one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum they they realize, hey, I like working from home. I can you know, pick the kids up and bring them to school, have lunch, but do all sorts of things. I prefer that flexibility. I want to work from the home. I don't want to go back to the office. Yeah. Is there a right or wrong in that? No, it's, it's, it's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. The only problem is, is what's the company doing? Okay, so if you're a work from home person, but the company wants you in the office, that's a mismatch. Okay, yeah. if uh, there are no work virtual office and you want to go into an office, well, that's also a mismatch. There's nothing wrong. It's just that there's some new parameters that have come into play because of what's of what's happened. Yes, and they are very important yeah. those parameters. 
and they become um, important in choosing a new place if you yeah. want to ch- to switch mm. if you want to find yeah. another job mm. this is a criteria mm. for most of them absolutely so that was just a very very simplistic example of mm-hmm. where where do you work but the other thing is that i think for for a lot of people is you know pre pandemic we got up, we commuted, <laughs> we went to the office, we were, were there all day, we, cut, we commute again and we go home, you know, yeah. and we accepted it. When we worked uh, from home, things changed, we might have experienced different things, and for a lot of people we've had time to reflect on what we really want to do. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people lost their jobs during the pandemic. The companies they work for went bankrupt. They, they ceased yeah. operations. Okay, you got to look for a job, and maybe your industry was was decimated. You know, food and beverage, hospitality. That was a decimated industry during yeah. during during the pandemic. So there are a lot of people who've switched career paths. You know, look at airline industry. Hey, they lay, they laid off loads of people. You know, and then when the skies are open again, they have a shortage of staff. People don't want to come back. So. People are voting with their feet. People are changing their minds. And, and it hasn't stopped. It really hasn't stopped. It's settling down a bit more, but it hasn't stopped. So the whole way of work has changed. And that was very interesting that this conference, we're looking at the future of work, the future of HR. And there's a lot of conversation. A lot of the speakers are looking at, you know, how do we manage this? You know, what, what can we expect? How is you know, the new uh, automation or generative AI, how is it impacting our lives? Mm-hmm. You know, what skills are, are changing? So there's an awful lot going on. I call it very, very unusual. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so, um, in conclusion, if uh, there is one idea that you want to um, be reminded of mm-hmm. uh, by our participants Mm -hmm. or people who are watching what would it be it's that there are two things actually or should I say there are three things okay (laughs) okay they're the three things I I touched on 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 my talk number one is we have to look after our health okay okay If, if you know it's a bit like you know on the plane you know when the oxygen mask drops down, put look it on yourself. first. You know, <laughs> that's basically, it's not being selfish, yeah. it's look after yourself, stay alive, and then you're in a position to help others. So it's, it's very, very much the same in the workforce, if you're a business leader, manager, or whatever. How can you serve others? How can you help others if, if you are unhealthy and, you know, like, don't put the mask on first? Um, so you have to um, prioritize self-care. We have yeah. to look after ourselves. And those are big, big challenges, as we know, during the during the pandemic. Um, you know, apart from health things, it's also very mental. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so you know, mental awareness, mental health is is, is a very, very big thing now in, in the workforce. So we must prioritize ourselves, our own self care, and our well being. Secondly, is uh, we need to be prepared to put our hand up and says, "Hey, I need some help." You know, Ask. You, yeah, ask for help. It, it's not. It's not weakness. It's it's actually strength. We, you know, like listen to our bodies, listen to ourselves. If we need help, you know, usually if we're very sick, you go and see a doctor. That's already asking for help. Yeah. But putting that aside, that's sort of a, a health thing. There are other things. You know, it could be in our job, whether we're engaged, whether we like our job or whatever. You know, we can go for for help. Find a coach. Coaches can really really help. Okay, I'm a coach. I'm biased. And and the third thing is is life really is about balance and it's not work-life balance or <laughs> life work balance it's, it's, it's balance it really yeah. is balance you know we either feel balanced or we don't feel balanced and it, you know work and life that's only that's only two things it's not that simple mm-hmm. there are many many elements read the book yes, I will. <laughs> there are many elements I will. and you, you keep them all in balance and if you feel in balance you feel great and you can do anything if you feel out of balance then you're not prepared to do it. Thank you very much. It was very inspiring. Thank also you very the speech, much. Uh, as always, you have a charisma, <laughs> a very 
um, nice charisma and uh, um, we are happy to have you every time. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.